one calls happened World Championship games. Yeah. There's also one in the um, AFC Championship game, the roughing the passer ball. That was just unnecessary. It was just unnecessary and like I don't understand why they really would do it. He barely he didn't even touch him really. So I don't think that's really a passing a pass it roughing the passer call. Yeah, I'd agree. My thing is, and I know I don't know how you may feel about this, but uh, I think professional sports are rigged. I think that uh, as you, there's, you cannot tell me some of the stuff that is going on, it's just by chance, and that's just the way it's supposed to happen. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that. Uh, you can't tell me that. You know, J.R. Smith, all of a sudden out of nowhere. Is gonna just forget the score. You've been playing this game your entire natural life. You just forget the score. You can't tell me that you know that player, the wide receiver who ran out for the Saints, got decked. He got clapped, and and nobody's gonna call that. On top of that, that was targeting because that was also a shot in his head. So my thing is, when are we gonna realize that some of this stuff is happening because it is rigged and there's money behind it versus it just being actual sports? I knew Tom Brady was gonna come back and win. I sat there, I called the entire game. I I knew what my mind was going to happen. I think pretty much everybody did. Like, if you see, if Tom Brady gets enough time on the clock and things have already been going his way, he's going to score and win the game. Mm. Like, even, especially when the refs and stuff are on his side, mm. it's, it's just like, it's going to be a win mm. for the Patriots. So, like, to me... The rigging in professional sports is ridiculous. It is. Like, one of the first that I've heard of is, like, all the way back when the Knicks ended up getting Patrick Ewing through the draft lottery. Because, mm. like, they say that he banged the card so the Knicks would get the first pick. That's all conspiracy, but it could be possible. Mm. Then, like, other times, like, uh, in the finals, how do you shoot, like... D Wade shot a ton of free throws in the finals versus the Mavs in 2006. Mm -hmm. How do you get to the the free throw line that many times in a game? Yeah. He shot like 20 or 30 free throws. It's yeah. ridiculous. You look at the same thing with James Harden. How do you get that many calls, that many free throws, and you get all these calls? You travel all the time. Yeah, but players like Steph Curry, they don't get calls for that. No. Or they do get called yeah, for. Yeah, they, they do get called for. Steph, I, he did, <laughs> he did that on purpose. Just kind of like a rain check to be like, yo, like is this really about to happen? And it happened, and he got called for it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, back to the Patriots. One thing that really kind of hammers it home for me to say that sports are rigged, especially football in particular. You play football. You know plays. Yeah. For the past eight years in a row, the Patriots have ran that same play on third and down where they throw it over the middle on a short little cross to either Gronkowski or Edelman, and nobody can stop it. I know. I was saying the exact same thing during the game. Like, this happened in the Super Bowl versus the Falcons on that ridiculous catch. And, like, it's just ridiculous how you can't stop that play. It's the same play every year. Every play. If, you, every year. if you're studying your play, if you're watching film, you should know this play. And it... I don't think it's, like, the players. I think it's just, like, Belichick is such a football mind uh -huh. that he's, like, he's, like, just, like, his plays work so well that he could have any person at quarterback and still win games. Like, when Brady had that suspension, mm -hmm. he had Jacoby Brissett winning a game or two. Jimmy Garoppolo, he didn't even have any snaps, really, for that suspension. He was winning games. Belichick has got a formula. No matter who what, who plays under him, he will always find a way to win. That, now, this is the truth. Now, you brought up a theory to me that you don't think Tom Brady's that good. I don't think he is the GOAT okay. because of Belichick. Okay. Belichick is like such a great football mind after uh -huh. learning by Bill Parcells mm -hmm. for years, winning championships with Bar 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 Parcells. And then to go in to get hired by the Jets, quit the next day, go to their rival, yeah. and win.
win all these championships, it's ridiculous. It is. Like, even if Belichick didn't have Brady, and he has, like, any quarterback, he, like, he won with Matt Castle, a career backup. <laughs> he won 11-5 and five with Matt Castle. I mean, if that doesn't say something, then... Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, so many players have been through a system and all had great years. Think of Randy Moss. Mm -hmm. He said a record-breaking year with Brady. Mm -hmm. Wes Welker. Even though he didn't win a championship, right. he still, that was his best, the best time in his career. Yeah. Playing under Belichick. And when you think about it, in those first few Super Bowls, Brady really wasn't the clutch one. It was Vinatieri. And the defense. Because, like, in their first scoop Super Bowl, it was 17-17 before that drive. Granted, Brady drove that drove the team down, but Vinatieri finished the job. He, like, put the knife, the dagger into his heart. And so, like, in, like in, like, in later in Brady's career, I feel like, he's gotten better. And he's become more of that focal point. Mm -hmm. Where we see, like, he doesn't need a kicker to win every Super Bowl for him. Right. He needs a running back who can catch up the backfield. True. And one or two receivers. He doesn't even have to have big name receivers. He can have Julian Edelman, who was a quarterback coming out of college. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. He went to Kent State. He was a quarterback. <laughs> I didn't know that because the thing is with the Patriots, they always cycle through receivers. I never hear about any of these receivers when they get them. I just, they just kind of come. So it's interesting that you bring that up. Now, I still think that he's amazing. I think Tom Brady's an amazing quarterback. Some of the throws that he makes, nobody else can make. That's true, that's true. And back to your point of you never hear these receivers, uh -huh. who's drafting these receivers? Belichick, because he's their coach slash GM, I believe. Oh. And so he's drafting these players, and they're winning rings. So, I mean, it's just... Amazing how all these players they go through a system one or two years ring or like one or two years they have a great season after you, they leave the Patriots you may hear about them for one or two years but then they just like they disappear like I believe number thirty four the running back Woodard or Woodyard uh, um talking about Danny Woodhead yeah yeah he played for the Jets yeah you really don't. I, I didn't know who he was until he started playing for the Patriots. Yeah. And so, like, you don't realize who people are and how talented they are or how they've been developed until they reach the Patriots. That's true. That's true. And to your point, what you said, Bill Belichick has been the head coach since 2000. Uh, and he is a, has extensive authority over Patriots football operations, effectively making him the general manager of the team as well. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the same thing that Tom Thibodeau had in Minnesota. Pretty much, pretty you know, much. Where I'm the coach, but I also get to call basketball, well, basketball, football in this case. I still make all the right decisions in terms of what happens on the field or on the court and what happens in the front office. Yeah. You know, I, um, now, I think that uh, who's next up, though, is going to be Pat Mahomes. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Patrick Mahomes, he's, like, ridiculous. The way he can throw a football, like a baseball, yeah. it's just crazy. You see all these sidearm throws, and I've always been told to not do that as much as possible because that can hurt yourself. It can. But, like, he's making all these ridiculous sidearm throws. I'm like, that's all baseball. And he's throwing it with the football, so it's amazing. Like, that notebook pass. Yeah. Yeah. i never seen that. I've never seen someone do that in football. That's pretty That's pretty gutsy. I don't I don't think anybody else will ever do that. you probably get benched if you do something like that. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I might, but, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, right. Your dad will have you by your neck. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I was reading this thing earlier, and they're talking about possibly replaying the NFC Championship game. I think that's the right thing to do. And yes. my issue with the Patriots is that they're always tied to some sort of cheating scandal. Like, so, like, for example. Like Gates, Gates. Exactly. I thought they should have replayed the Colts in that game because you obviously had an unfair advantage. So, to me... Replaying it seems like common sense, but when you get that high up, I don't think common sense applies to you anymore. At least is what it seems like. I mean, for like that NFC Championship game, to me, 
There were so many things that could have been called in that game. I yeah, think on both sides. Just, uh, on yeah, both I sides. think they're just trying to let them play football. But that pass interference that should have been called is it, just like that. That's not right. You got to call that. I'm pretty sure if Roby Coleman was a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger, number 11 would have been seriously hurt. Yeah. And, I, and not to call a pass interference call. That would be like basically saying, yeah, you may have just got hurt, but I don't care. You had no chance of catching that ball. Yeah. Which, if he didn't get hit, he could have caught the ball and scored right there. All right. And that's also targeting. He hit him in the head. Yeah. That was big targeting, so. It looked like a legal hit, but when the heads collide, that's on the defender, so. Absolutely. And. Personally, me, I'm more of a fan of the NBA than the NFL anyway. You know, switching to the NBA, what do you think is uh, going to happen this season, Mighty? Um, me, personally, I think that the Western Conference Finals, if the Lakers can keep it going and Lonzo stays healthy and LeBron stays healthy, they can make the, at least the Western Conference Finals mm -hmm. and play the Warriors unless they make the eight seed. Okay, what about you, my partner in crime, Anthony Williams? Um, I don't know. I don't know if they can actually make it there. Why do you say that? Um, <clears throat> uh, because you have like, or you have the Warriors, and then you have, um, or yeah, you have the Warriors, and they have. Uh, a whole starting lineup of all stars, mm -hmm. and now that Demarcus Cousins is back, you have another threat to worry about. But the only thing I have to worry about is that they might. Um, I'm worried if they don't work good together, mm -hmm. because it took a little bit of time for um to for them to work a new system with KD, and now that KD's in the lineup. They kind of, like, Draymond Green is kind of, like, he's not doing it as much as he was when KD didn't come. Right. But I don't know how De DeMarcus Cousins will fit into the, or into, like, every, in the whole system. Mm -hmm. And I also worry about if they don't have enough money to pay for all five All-Stars because of uh, how much they might want. And I don't know exactly their current salary, but if they might, or if they're not exactly, or, but, yeah, they might want more than you guys might think. Yeah. Me, personally, I think that Boogie's going to take a pay cut. Katie will take a, take a pay cut. Steph will take a pay cut. I think all of them, all of them would pretty much take a pay cut to stay. Like, we seen D. Wade do that to keep Chris Bosh when him and LeBron were still in Miami. And we also seen that, like, I think it's going to be like a trend in the NBA to start making these super teams. So, like, we have, we'll end up having teams like the Spurs, like, they'll be like, less than others because you'll have all the All-Stars want to go to the Lakers, the Celtics, the Warriors, all chasing a ring. They really don't want to put in all the effort to get the ring. They just want to get there and win the ring. Like, I think that's what Katie and Boogie are doing.